And what I'm going to do is, so I'm actually using the uh, toy model, the toy version of Castle Grey Skull um, that I have up at the top of my uh, shelf um, as my inspiration for this. And then I'm kind of adding a couple things as well. I think we're going to have all this is going to be lava because of course I've got my my volcano here in the background. Um, this will all be the vapors, um, the vog, <laughs> I guess, um, which is is going to be all the vapors and smoke and heat from the lava. This will be a lava pit right here. So there'll be a little um, crevice and um, almost kind of like a lava moat is kind of what I'm envisioning. So I'm going to have this surrounded by a lava moat and then we'll have um, of course the, the, the trap uh, or the, the, the drawbridge will, is the mouth that comes down and that'll sort of um, bridge the gap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting. Um, I'm going to use black gesso. Now I started with black gesso already for the entire um, undercoat. I just painted everything in black um, just to make sure that the canvas is nice and smooth. I'm, I'm actually using a watercolor canvas, which is smooth anyway, and I sanded that down, then I added some gesso. That's got it nice and smooth now. And also the gesso is going to help to really uptake the color so that it doesn't like soak in or bleed through or, or anything like that. So got my golden black gesso and I'm going to start by blocking in our Castle Gray Skull. What I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to kind of work in segments because I don't want to lose all of the drawing <clears throat> as I'm going. So I'm going to get, um, I think I'm going to use Maybe a bit smaller brushes here. I need to make sure I have good detail. I need to make sure I'm detailing this thing out well. And I think what I might use maybe is this um, number five round brush. It's just got a big round head on it. So I'll start up here at the top, start working my way down, work my way over. So, a little water. So we have this gun here at the top. And I'll do the cannons later here. Um, what I want to do though is just kind of get the base kind of painted in. This is going to get pretty repetitive, so I will probably go. Um, I will probably speed things up, but I'm just really simply just going to block things in. Guide. But I'm going to kind of start with just an underpainting of nice dark 
black gesso. So let's go ahead and just speed the process up a little bit as I kind of block in this underpainting.
Okay, now we've gotten this far where we've gotten kind of this first section of the castle built in. What I'm going to do is I want to bring in some shadowing. Um, there's a couple ways I could do that. I could, I could glaze it on um, with some water and some really kind of uh, watered down paint, um, almost like a wash, which if you've seen some past videos, you've seen me do that. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use an airbrush. Um, I really want to keep a nice softness to this. So I've just mixed a little bit of uh, opaque black um, acrylic paint into my airbrush. And so I'm going to do that right now. start the block and phase here for the second part and this will require me going back to just adding my black gesso as a nice dark undercoat so I'll go ahead and speed up the camera so that we can just save some time here.
Okay, we're going to move on down here to this little segment here. I'm going to leave the door for now alone. Um, but you'll notice that I make an effort to go around my sketch and to leave a little gap here as I'm painting um, because I just didn't want to cover it and then try to redraw it all back in again um, because I, I could, um, you know, make a mistake or change the perspective slightly, which I didn't want to do. So it's just easier to leave what I had originally uh, painting around that. So anyway, leave the little gap. That's just an important uh, point um, that, I, that I, you know, would, would make here. All right, so now let's get going into the skull. This is going to be the fun part of all of this, I think. Um, the most interesting part of all of the castle, anyway. Um, and again, when I get this painted, I'll come back with my airbrush just like I did over here, and I'll bring in the shadowing and things. Um, but we'll get started. So moving on down.
back quickly with a glaze, and this is nothing more than just sap green. And I'm just kind of going over a few areas here. I just want to get them a little greener in some areas. So this is just a wash. Brush. Let's see what size I want to use. Let me use that size. Let's see how this looks. All right. What I want to first do is just bring in the wood grain. I'm keeping it just a little bit wet, a little bit of water, just because I want it to slide. But I also want kind of that skimming. I want to make it kind of kind of leaving some of that skimming that so it brings that black in from the background and that'll help to create sort of like wood grain. So originally I thought I'd do this in kind of a gold color. This is going to be the crest. Um, but I decided to scrap doing it in gold. I just, I think I'll go with silver because it's really more like a silvery or an iron kind of color anyway on the, um, on the toy set. So I think I'm going to change that because I, I kind of stood back and I thought, ah, didn't like it quite as much as I thought I would. So I'm just gonna take some Payne's Gray, a little white. I'm gonna mix myself up here, and just a nice kind of dark gray. I get the right color that I want. Yeah, I could probably go with that. We'll start dark and we'll add some highlights. So I'm gonna redo it. Let's start.
Okay, now that we've got that airbrush completed, I just wanted to get that in there real quick. I figured that would probably be good before I got the crest in here. Um, what I'm going to do real quickly though is I'm going to grab my small filbert brush, little filbert brush here, and I'm going to take just a little bit of black on my brush. I kind of just want to sort of haze the edges here just a little bit. I just want to try to create kind of a bit of a nice transition.
right, so again, this is really a, a repetition of what we've just been doing. And using my filbert brush demonstrated, just tapping in the color so we can create all this texture and allowing this black to also show through. So I've left slight little gaps. I also made sure that the paint was not overly um, transparent. Um, so, matter of fact, I, let me restate that. Make sure the paint was not overly opaque, a little bit on the transparent side, so that it does allow the background to come through. Now from this point we can start to tweak, just as I've done before, I can start to bring in all the lines with my rigger brush, all the little stonework. So just coming into the black, making sure it's watered down enough that this will slide, I can begin to start to create some textures, some lines,
right guys, so just like before, came in with the airbrush. Now I'm gonna reiterate, you don't have to use an airbrush. You could also just glaze the shadow. What you saw me do is, of course, bring in the blue, which is my shadow color, between the skull and this, I don't even know what you call these. I know there's uh, a technical castle term for this. Um, I'll have to look it up. But this particular spire here, whatever this is, um, put the blue right between the two. I did cover a lot of it up when I did that. What I'm going to do is come back. I want to just bring in a little bit more texture now that we've kind of worked all this in. So I'm going to go in with some lighter color. Um, just grab, go into that same blue, which is ultramarine blue and cerulean, a little bit of white, and I'm just going to bring in just some of this where we kind of spray, um, spray brushed it, airbrushed it, and kind of lost a little bit here. I'll come back now and kind of re-establish it just, just a little bit. I don't need a lot. I really want a lot of this and some good shadowing, but just little slight touches of that light blue. And that'll kind of bring that back. And then of course in here as well. So I don't have a lot of paint on the brush. Just a little bit.
Okay guys, so um, we got step one, step two, step three. We got this fourth step in right here. We're gonna go to the fifth step, which is bringing in the bass. Um, I went ahead and finished out my lava to the most, for the most part, because I'm gonna be forming the foundation here with this sort of huge rock island. Um, protruding out of this lava bed. So I want to get that in first so that I can start blocking in all of this here. We're going to have this uh, kind of like vertebrae here on the sides. Um, so I'll paint all that in just like I did with the castle. We'll start it all in black and then we'll start building 
the highlight colors on top of that. So let's start with phase five of Castle Grayskull. Okay, so we've drawn in everything now, kind of sketched in what we wanted to have here. Got everything nice and, and dark and black like we did with the first four phases of the castle. So here, I'm starting this foundation, I'm going to start over this way and work my way this way just because I, I'm right-handed and I don't want to smudge anything as I go. But uh, we're going to create just some accent, some accents is what we're really going to do. So I'm going to go back into, I've got this dark, kind of a dark green mixture here. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I want to make sure I don't cover like everything up as I go. And I want to still let a lot of the background show through. So I'm just going to kind of dot some of this dark this dark green. I'm going to lighten this up just a teeny, teeny bit. Just a teeny bit. Okay. I'm just kind of dabbing. So still this is going to be a lot of repetition of things that we've already shown, but um, I won't need to um, talk the way through everything since a lot of what I'm doing has already been kind of talked about and demonstrated. See, I'm just kind of letting a lot of my negative space pop through so I can have little holes and see some of that that dark underpainting. dry brush on just a little bit of like 
definition here. We'll let a lot of that stay really dark and black, but... And a lot of this is going to actually be reflecting some of the lava, but I'm going to paint this in first and then I'll go back and, and do that. So I'm going to clean my brush, <coughs> dab it off. Okay, so now I've got a little bit of this lighter um, mixture of green. So I can come back over the top of this. And start forming, forming these up just a little bit better. So I'm just kind of dotting, leaving spaces. And then I'll start to form kind of that rough, kind of bony texture. Now, real quickly, we're going to go back and we're going to jump over to our kind of bluish mixture here. Ultramarine blue, cerulean, a little white. The uh, least touch of umber. Kind of desaturate it just a little bit. And start to form kind of some reflected highlight. Alright, so now I'll take my rigger brush, grab some black, and we'll just kind of complete out kind of the separation here in this bone. And I can just kind of get it a little porous, add some a couple little marks.
Okay. Then I'm gonna come back. Grab my white, grab a little bit of sap green. All right, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna dry this real quick. my little tiny filbert brush. We're going to have some reflection from our lava. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of orange. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab my, I've got two versions of orange going here. I've got kind of this darker orange version and I've got a lighter orange. And if you need to make a darker orange, just take whatever orange you have and mix a little purple. I'm sorry, a little blue. Mix a little blue with it. That's a complement color. And um, that'll help to desaturate it. Okay. So I'm just going to scumble this dry brush on a little bit of highlight from the lava here at the bottom. So I'm kind of starting with that darker orange. start getting a little bit of a reflection there. I'll come back, grab some white. And because of the lightning bolt and we've highlighted the left side of this, I'm going to grab just a little bit of pure white. We're going to give this a bit of a silver lining.
Okay, now as I move closer to this um, lava, I'm gonna grab a little yellow with some of that white. Make a bright yellow color here. foggy kind of almost like uh, vapors and, and smoke and things so that's probably going to cover that but um, this is the basic general kind of pattern we're going to follow. I got a few more lines because we want this to kind of look pretty organic. bring in some stone work here. We're at the cliff. So I can do the, all this now. Um, I can just, I have a little hair there. I can just um, speed up the camera now. We'll just kind of blow through this, but that's basically what we're gonna do. Repeated.
right, guys. So I think uh, we've completed this video of putting together a Castle Grayskull from Masters of the Universe. And I'm glad I was able to show you how I put that together. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I'm not going to be, again, uh, recording the rest of this painting. Um, I'll be working the rest of this off camera, but uh, I did want to just show you a, a video on the castle itself, which was a lot of fun. Uh, something that's just got a lot of interest, a lot of detail. So I hope you enjoyed that. So please tune in again for the, uh, the next video that comes out. Um, I'll try to think of something fun and exciting that I can uh, share with you. And um, so, again, if you've not subscribed, please do so. If you like what you see, please like it and share it. And um, until next time, thank you so much. So long.